Hi, my name is Marilee Bresciani, and I have the privilege of serving as the founder and the president of the Russian Dio the Foundation. This week, our final week before you all present your compassion projects and sharing your lessons about what you learned with others in the course, we'll talk about how you can continue to develop and maintain your practice. But first, let's practice. You know the drill, right? Take a moment, pause this video, go to this URL, pick a practice that you would like to practice now, and simply practice. When you're ready, resume the video. Welcome back. How was it? Good. Now we invite you to journal. Pull out your journals, pause the video, and reflect on these questions. And again, if these are hard to read, remember that there is a PowerPoint that you can download on the course website to look at them more closely. When you're ready, come on back. Welcome back. How is it? Good. <laughs> We are here to serve you. We really are. So if you have any questions, feel free to email us at rushingtoyoga at gmail.com or check out our Frequently Asked Questions site where you may find a question that you have already answered. Either way, we're here to serve you, so keep us posted. A few reminders that we've provided for you weekly is to Simply avoid judgment of your practice. Set the intention to practice without setting the expectations for what will happen when you practice or as a result of your practice. Simply observe and inquire. Check in with your body, your feelings, your thoughts, and just notice. And then question if you'd like or Simply be with the experience. If you, you may find it helpful to find a friend to practice with or a coworker or a family member, whatever the case may be, simply grab a buddy if you'd like and ask them to join in your practice or as we mentioned last week, simply ask them to, if they're available, to allow you to share something that you're discovering through your practice. The integrative inquiry process is nothing more than bringing back an ancient wisdom of being mindful of all that we know to be true or believe to be true in research and teachings of others and checking in moment by moment with how our body feels, what we are sensing as a result of being in a particular situation or hearing something even spoken, integrating that all together into the uncertainty and ambiguity of life, the I don't know. This is all a practice, a daily practice, actually a moment by moment practice where we're integrating what we are discovering to be true with what we are feeling and sensing to be true for us, observing, asking questions, and being okay about not knowing the answer as well. For in that lies all the possibility and the discovery. <clears throat> as you move forward, we have some thoughts for you to consider or ideas. Again, see how they feel. See how they settle in your body, how they resonate with you and your thoughts and your day-to-day. -day. See, just try some on and see if it helps you practice moment by moment every day. Some of these suggestions include setting the intention to practice. We've talked a lot about the power of setting that energy around our intention. So consider setting an intention to practice. 
consider also scheduling it in. We've blogged about time, we've talked about time and how there is no such thing as new time or more time or anything like that. So consider reallocating something that you may be doing to trying on some focused breathing or focused movement practice or body scan or loving kindness. And then again in the moment, by moment opportunity, you can practice. Even if it's one mindful breath a day or simply observing whether you are in a conversation and really listening to what somebody has to say, really tuning in, or if there is a story running around in your mind and that's where you are. Right? Just notice, that's the practice. Some of the things students have told us that's really helpful is when they create images or you know a picture they might cut out of a magazine or a photo or some sort of symbolism that they're using in their home or their workplace or their car or their wallet or their phone or whatever that just reminds them to practice, to breathe in the present moment, maybe to breathe, maybe to move their neck from side to side, whatever it is that brings you back to this connectedness, to this integration of our mind, our body, and that great I don't know aspect that many call the spirit or the soul. Okay. So setting a, an image that reminds you of that. Some folks set a timer on their phone, like a little bell that might go off. Other folks use, like we heard somebody honking, uh, or maybe you heard somebody honking, I heard somebody honking, and that's also a reminder for me to smile and be in my body, recognize where my feet actually are, where my thoughts actually are. So you can use day-to-day -day sounds that just naturally occur throughout your day as a reminder to practice. You can also uh, use a self-compassion touch as a reminder. We're doing this a lot right now at my workplace. We're experiencing a lot of stress, and so I'm using a lot of hands to heart just as a check-in with how am I feeling, take a moment to breathe deeply, get out of the, the rat brace of my brain that might be saying the what if, what if, what if, what if, um, and so just being in my body, feeling, returning to this present moment in time, right here, right now. This is the experience of my life. Or if I choose not to do this, then it will always be up here. Whatever is happening, I don't even know if it happens up there, right? We don't know. Or last week, we don't know where that happens. All those thoughts really happen. We can see them processed in the brain, but we don't really know where they originate. Anyway, the point is it's either going to be some sort of made-up story that's running around in my head or I'll actually be awake and experiencing right here, right now, like talking with you. How fun is that? There's no place I'd rather be. Other reminders? Mm, select messages that will remind you to practice, particularly when you notice triggers. So one of my messages is about, this is not about me, right? So if somebody is reacting to me, I'll be like, this is not about me. This is something they're experiencing. This is their experience that they're having. And that is my reminder to practice compassion, right? So. Again, not that I always remember that message, but thinking about what it is that does trigger me in our self-inquiry process and inviting in a reminder of a, a, a phrase. And we talked about this earlier on in the course. It, it might be, I am good enough. I am safe. You know, whatever it is to just remind yourself to trigger that back in. So you get out of the story of whatever it is that you're starting to create up here and get right here, right here, to actually have the interaction and create a different possibility than perhaps the one that has been created in the past. Because you're present, you're integrated with your wisdom of the body and the mind 
and the energy of all that you're encountering, sending you messages, being, being aware of that instead of in the story of what used to be. Hmm. Good stuff, huh? Oh, and our personal favorite, take one deep mindful breath a day. And then very important is to forgive yourself when something that you expected did not come about in the way that you expected it, including and especially your own practice. This is a continued journey for me. Self-forgiveness, when I... Uh, you know, go off on somebody and I'm thinking, wow, that's reaction. Um, just yesterday I was in my office and my colleague came in and we had gotten some stressful news and <laughs> I was in my office going, this is reacting, this is reacting, I'm reacting right now. <laughs> it was really funny and it was a big victory for me. So it's, it wasn't as if I tried to stop what I was feeling or sensing or that sort of panic, but observing that while I was doing it was like, wow, this is reacting, this is reacting, this is what reacting looks like, was, was, a, was really fun. It was really fun and it was funny and she burst out laughing and then I was laughing and then before I knew it, I really wasn't sure what I was upset about. Uh, then I was reminded what it was, but then I could respond, right? So that was kind of fun. It was very fun. Um, so, oh yeah, sharing the practice. I mean, I mean that's an, another example too of, uh, my colleague came in and she practices as well and you know here I was reacting and so when I said I this is reacting this is reacting and she burst out laughing because uh, we both practice and so sh sharing that just experience in that moment like I'm reacting now I'm reacting um, I feel myself reacting this is what I'm feeling I'm caught in this story and wow it's really going on and on about what's gonna happen next when <laughs> you know it hasn't. So it's just funny. But sharing that type of thing or sharing something you discovered when when you practiced and something, uh, you know, just sharing that experience is helpful in your choosing whether you want to continue to practice, right? Very fun, very fun. Uh, and again, always what we talked about uh, earlier, avoid expectations for your practice. Avoid expectations of your practice. Simply set the intention to practice rather than having expectations about what will happen. And also, one of my favorites is this reminder that the next moment is a new moment. And so if I just demonstrated to all of the world two seconds ago that I was not practicing self-compassion or compassion for others. This moment is a new moment. I can apologize for the pain that I may have caused. I can choose something different. The next moment is always a new moment. I love that. So we invite you to pull out your journals now and consider this question. So pause the video, consider these questions, and then when you're ready, go ahead and return. Uh, press resume. The questions are, write down at least one strategy that you can utilize daily right now, next week, next month. So what can you utilize out of these strategies or a strategy that you found helpful in reminding you to practice? What can you use right now? next week, next month. Whenever you're ready, just press resume and we'll be here. Okay, so now you have some strategies that you've put in place to practice. And now let's think about going forward, implementing this, making the practice a habit, not an un conscious habit. So I actually have to be careful there, don't I? Because when I say habit, it means maybe something I do unconsciously. Um, but so good catch. Thank you. But how about making the practice something that you do daily, moment to moment, or one moment, one day? Some things to consider might be this. Who am I? What do I want? 
What is my life's purpose? What is my intention for my practice today? How do I envision myself practicing? When do I envision myself practicing? With whom do I envision myself practicing? How do I envision myself being in my practice? How will it feel? So at the start of your day, as you invite in these questions, again, we're sending out that energetic, right? That energetic signature around intention and envisioning and that sort of thing into our day-to-day so that we might more likely recognize the opportunity to practice when we envision how it feels and how it looks and how it resonates and also simply looking at our day and seeing when we might have the opportunities. One of my favorite things to do is if I have meetings on my schedule that day when I awaken that I think might be controversial or mm, just really tough emotional conversations, I think, wow, that will be a great opportunity for me to practice, right? That moment, that moment, or the series of moment in that block of time on my calendar. Yay! I'm so excited, right? So what else? How about at the end of the day, Asking yourself, um, by the way, Deepak Chopra calls this recapitulation over your day. So at the end of the day, asking yourself again, who am I? What do I want? What is my life's purpose? What was my intention for my practice today? How did I practice? When did I practice? With whom? And how did it feel to be in my practice? What did I learn about my practice today? These are also things that you can simply ask at the end of the day, whether or not you felt your practice went as you had intended. Right? So in the morning you set your intention, in the evening you examine your day, look back on it, discover what you've learned, and we have this next set of questions titled, what you might ask yourself if it didn't go as well, but these are also good questions to ask even if your practice went as you expected, because what are expectations, right? They're stories. (laughs) Uh, their judgments, right? They're, uh, they're, what, they're what keeps us in self-judgment and non-forgiveness. So even if your day went as you expected, ooh, even more so perhaps, ask yourself these questions at the end of the day. What did I learn about my practice today? Do I feel I had a choice to practice? What feelings did I sense when I didn't practice? So again, notice that we're really talking about observing whether you felt you had a choice or didn't have a choice. And then when that, in that moment when you felt you had a choice or didn't have a choice, and again, sometimes it's more helpful to look back on that day if we don't recognize it in the moment, right? So if you didn't feel like you had a choice, What were you feeling at the time? What were your thoughts surrounding that? What were those body senses? Can you get yourself back in that space so you can simply observe and discover and notice and be present to that experience of the past only to observe and recognize some perhaps unconscious patterns that you can then recognize when those are happening and recognize that you can choose something different, right? So that's sort of the point of all of this. 
Oh, and my favorite then, yeah, did I remind myself that the next moment is a new moment and a new opportunity for a new choice? And if I did it, what were the feelings or thoughts that might have been occurring at that point? If I didn't remind myself that I was, that I did have a new moment, a new moment to make a new choice. If I didn't remind myself as I look past on the day, can I recall the feelings or thoughts that were occurring there? And then maybe you want to practice the Byron Katie inquiry process. Is it true? Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that those thoughts were true? And consider who you would be if you didn't believe those thoughts were true and who you would be if you did believe those thoughts were true, right? So consider all of this as we become more and more aware of how it is we want to be in our practice. Yeah, fun stuff. All right, so think about too, what strategies might have helped me practice once I discovered I wasn't practicing. And then moving into that commitment to not judge, right? To avoid judgment. So. Now that I might be at my end of my day and I recognize those moments where I didn't practice, how will I let go of the fact that I didn't practice in that moment or series of moments? How will I let go? How will I forgive myself? How will I recognize that right now is a new moment? And in recognizing that right now is a new moment to practice, guess what? Yay! (laughs) You've practiced. You've practiced. That's the point. That is exactly the point. Recognizing now in this moment is a new moment. And I have a new opportunity to show up in compassion and self-compassion and compassion towards others. That's a new moment. And that's the practice. So as a reminder, every moment you are aware that you are experiencing your life as a moment-by-moment choice, as a moment-by-moment experience, you're practicing. It really is that simple. Doesn't cost you a penny to continue your practice. Congratulations. As we move forward, we invite you to continue practicing the conscious choice-making model, simply becoming aware of your choices, your relationship with them, and owning your choices, owning your consequences. In closing, we revisit India Ari, I choose and invite you to practice movement and joy and reflection. And until next week, Namaste, which means the teacher and the student in me acknowledges the teacher and the student in you. Have a great week. <laughs>